I am Regan Sigidi and I welcome you to another edition of Business Time, proudly brought to you by Skyband, right here on Times Television. Coming up in the program today, we we'll look at business performance in 2018. Government ignores advice on debt. We have this and other stories. Now you can access the Daily Times, Malawi News and the Sunday Times newspapers anytime, anywhere, by the click of a mouse or a swipe on your smartphone with E-Times right on your mobile gadget. Flip through the pages with a swipe or a click. Navigate through all pages and see clear pictures and designs. Access a database of previous papers of the Daily Times, Malawi News and the Sunday Times. Easy. Subscribe now to E-Times. Go to www.times.mw forward slash e-edition. Sign up and log in. Enter your password and enjoy the newspaper. It's about time. The Malawi Confederation of Chambers of Commerce and Industry has described the year 2018 as a mixed bag for business in Malawi. MCCCI President Pris Kabondan Gaga says various challenges resided in firms failing to take advantage of economic stability. He explains in this interview. The year 2018 has been a year with mixed uh, uh, reactions, in my view. It has been a mixed bag. Number one, uh, the year 2018 is where we saw the macroeconomic fundamentals improving. We saw interest rates going down. We saw inflation being managed. Okay. Ordinarily, given other factors constant, you would expect that it would be a year where they would have a very a good business performance. But that has not been the case. Largely, it has also been a year where agriculture production has not worked well for this country. And bearing in mind that most of our industries are agro-based, it meant that the businesses have been affected by the challenging agricultural season that we have had, okay, number one. Number two, yes, interest rates could be low, inflation could be low. And uh, we can ha we, we, are, we have been having uh, uh, the reserves of forex was there, uh, but energy has been a major challenge for the year. To an extent that most of the companies, most of the industries have been operating below capacity. I would say below 50 percent capacity. As a result, you couldn't expect greater output from such kind of low operational capacity. So the industries have suffered greatly. I think that's why when you look at the, uh, in terms of uh, tax revenue correction, it has been a year which has been a challenge to government to correct enough revenues. Uh, from, uh, from, from the private sector because the private sector has operated dismally due to these uh, uh, two major challenges that I have, I, have, uh, I have highlighted. So you would expect that uh, low interest rates, inflation, forex and what have you improving, the companies would, 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 would go and borrow in the bank, but they wouldn't go and borrow because they borrow for production. And where production is being challenged by low agricultural uh, season, is being challenged by uh, energy uh, crisis. So I think the, in terms of uh, business, uh, it, I mean, the businesses have been affected because of these two major challenges. So it has been quite a, uh, a challenging year for the business community and also uh, I mean, we can only hope for next year. We are going into the next year with optimism. Uh, for instance, the issue of energy, I think the initiative that has been taken uh, by the Zambia uh, interconnection, which we have observed, I think it's, a, 
it's a right it's a, it's a step in the right direction uh, to address energy crisis but perhaps we could have done even much better so we just hope that it, it will be a year and next year will be a year where we will see improvements however our governments we we, we would we want to expect that the government will manage the fiscals because we are going into elections and they normally I think going by the trends, the previous trends, it's also where you see government uh, expenditure not being contained because it's about a campaign, it's about uh, government sometimes adopts populist policies to impress the electorates to be in power, continue being in power. So those are the elements that sometimes they put us out of the right framework in terms of economic development or economic growth. So that's what I would say that uh, we are also looking forward to to see government containing the, the, the expenditure. Because we think by doing that, it also be providing a, a good uh, opportunity for private sector not to be crowded out because you know when the government is not correcting enough revenue from tax where would it get the money it would obviously go and borrow domestically or internationally and that would also easily affect the strides which the government had taken in terms of managing the inflation the interest rates and also the forex. So that's how I would, I would briefly describe uh, the year that has just is coming to an end today, but also how we look forward to with optimism. And if, in terms of agricultural season, uh, we can only hope that the, the way the season has started with good rains will proceed like that. Of course, there were uh, predictions about uh, being an Ionino year. Uh, we can only pray that uh, uh, things work to our advantage. Maybe if indeed there will be an Eonino, our prayer is it must be a minimized <laughs> Eonino or no Eonino at all. That's our wish. Because this country, the back of the economy, uh, the back of whatever we do, it's still reliant on agriculture. All the sectors, you talk of service sector, transport and what have you, logistics and anything relies heavily on agriculture. Until we come to a point where we have, di we have diversified out of agriculture, I think we'll be talking of something else. But for now, agriculture will still be the, the mainstay of this economy. So a good season from now towards the end would be good. But also embarking, of, we, have, we have taken note that government is also embarking on irrigation. We can only hope that we need to scale up with the speed that is required. Otherwise, we can't be relying on rain fed agriculture. I think that's what I can say. Remember, this is business time on Times Television, proudly sponsored by Skyband. Still on to come, government ignores expert advice on date. Now you can access the Daily Times, Malawi News, and the Sunday Times newspapers anytime, anywhere, by the click of a mouse or a swipe on your smartphone. With eTimes, right on your mobile gadget, flip through the pages with a swipe or a click. Navigate through all pages and see clear pictures and designs. Access a database of previous papers of the Daily Times, Malawi News, and the Sunday Times. Easy. Subscribe now to eTimes. Go to www.times.mw forward slash eedition. Sign up and log in. Enter your password and enjoy the newspaper. It's about time. The Indigenous Business Association of Malawi has said 2018 promised a lot but delivered nothing. IBAM President Mike Mlomba told Times that local businesses ended up disappointed in 2018. He explains. We can say we started well uh, uh, at the beginning of this year, but the ending, uh, it hasn't been good. Why am I saying that? Because you remember that uh, uh, this year, uh, IBAM was, had been fighting 
about the procurement assisting in Malawi because it always favors the foreigners or we compete with the foreigners or direct investors who come here and enjoy the fruits of the, this country. Now what we did, we have been fighting, we said no, we want the, uh, uh, at least a certain policy and the, the amendment, the procurement act was amended and the president signed it. That was the beginning and we had a hope that maybe this year is going to be uh, one of the best year in terms of uh, businesses. Later on we sat down and we said okay what next if this policy uh, the president has already signed and it's now uh, f uh, remaining with implementation we said okay let's look into the interest rates because a lot of uh, masses in countrywide have been complaining about the interest rates. People have been saying now, uh, when we borrow maybe, for example, one million kwacha, and we have paid even another one million kwacha, and the banks, they always tell us that no, there is also another four million kwacha addition to that. These are some of the things because of compound interest and things like that. And the other thing uh, we, looked, we looked at is that when you are um, uh, planning to start a business, you can go to the bank and say, I want to borrow so much money and I'll pay in two years or one year. But you know, some, most of the time business doesn't go like that. And the other thing is that here in Malawi, we don't have to, uh, investment bank that where you can go and borrow money and the payment can take place maybe within 10 years or 8 years or 7 years. Here it's 2, 3, 4, depends with the nature of your uh, business plan. So because of that, we sat down and we discussed with the parliamentarians, both from uh, uh, opposition and even government side. And we said, guys, we, the interest rates are too high. We want to lobby if the parliament can maybe discuss with the regulator, to the bank, and as well as commercial banks, so that maybe we can have capital here in Malawi, which is in like other countries. There are so many countries which are doing capital and they are working. Now, uh, the parliamentarians said, okay, let's discuss with the committee, finance committee, which uh, was, was still is chaired by uh, Honorable Jipigo and the deputy Honorable Tonzi, I think, and other parliamentarians. They did well, they tried to fight hard. We had meetings in the Blanta and in Mangoji. Uh, some of the meetings maybe they were doing without consulting him, but we did not get worried because we knew that the outcome the parliamentarians are going to tell us. But now, uh, I remember now we went to Mangoji where uh, we had a very big meeting. It took the whole day up to maybe around 7 o'clock. There we had two speakers from outside the country, the governors. Uh, governor from uh, Kenya, from the Bank of Kenya, and Governor from the Bank of Zambia. We were discussing about capping. They told us the side effects of capping in their countries. But the only one point which Ibam uh, 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 took and the, uh, it, it was that in these countries they did not do uh, consultations. Uh, they maybe the head of state or the government just said from tomorrow capping must take place. Whilst here in Malawi, you Malawians, you are doing a good job because even this one is also a conservation forum where we are discussing about capping in Malawi. So we said, okay, no problem. Because of the size of our economy, what do we do? And I remember I, uh, I stood up and I said, no, you know what? I need to know what I can tell my constituency from Kalonga to Kusanje because it's a big constituency. I was talking about the business persons who are doing various types of business and they depend on borrowing from a commercial banks, even microfinance, because the interest rates is too high, especially microfinance. You know, they pay almost even 100%. But because people are desperate, they have got no choice, they just go there and borrow ignorance. And uh, this, uh, another thing which I also said was. Uh, can we do trials about capping here in Malawi? Because I know the commercial banks uh, and other people, they have got uh, a worry that no, here in Malawi, maybe our economy can collapse because uh, of the size of our economy. I said, no, okay, no problem. Let's do like a malaria drug. Doctors sometimes say, 
we are trying uh, uh, malaria drug. If it works, it will tell you. If it doesn't work, it will go back and try other means. So that's what I said. But the people opposed. I said no. Uh, our the size of our economy. If we look at it, then the economy is going to uh, uh, clash. So I think we do not agree until I think the issue went to the parliament, and maybe some few parliamentarians uh, opposed about the cabin. We said okay, no problem. But because of that, that things did not uh, uh, work according to our uh, our dream. And uh, you can agree with me that a lot of indigenous Malians, business persons, countrywide, have lost properties. And they are still losing properties up now. It doesn't mean these people, they don't know how to do business. They know, but the interests are too high. We have to thank uh, uh, some of the presenters. One of them is Professor. Uh, Mangani. Professor Mangani, I think he, he said a lot about both sides, side effects and the goodness of uh, the, 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 the capping and even the issue about the higher interest rates and everybody clapped hands that no, I think he, he knows what he's doing As he, and I can say he's one of the best economists in this country in terms of uh, theory because you know we always say that we have got two types of uh, uh, a theory in Malawi, uh, it's Plagatiko, and others, uh, the, the, the economists in Malawi. There are others, they know about the books theory, the others, they know about the uh, Plagatiko. But I can say, uh, Professor Mandani, he, he knows the life, the challenges uh, another person is facing. And he knows also the challenges somebody went to school and started business is facing. So he said a lot, and everybody clapped hands. That I think he, Professor Mangani knows what he's doing. But he said, let's sit down as Malawians and we see what we can do going forward. So, in short, down I can say, uh, I don't know. The president signed about the Procurement Amendment Act, but up now it is not working. And that one is also, has also added something that indigenous Malawians cannot make a business or even a profit. Another thing is about the profit issue, uh, the, the interest issue, which we have said interest is too much. And we are asking the Reserve Bank, maybe they know any time, any minute, any seconds, something is coming up. And I uh, can also salute the governor. The governor of Reserve Bank in Donald Obama is a child he knows because he has been calling us, private sectors, commercial banks, even in Lyongwe. We have been having meetings. John Camilo can agree with me. You can see that even the governor is not comfortable uh, about the interest rate. And he asked, he asked the commercial banks, what can we do, guys? The commercial banks said, no, give us enough time so that we can sit down and see what we can do. But I know because the masses are confused each and every year, when they hear that this, time, this bank has made close to 40, 30 billion, 20 billion, 15 billion watts. And it may be what is supposed to be done is to have a big place conference. Because the excuses we hear from all these commercial banks that you don't know we have got big overheads, we have got this, but a ordinary person doesn't know. Proceeding with the program, let's look at how the Malawi Kwaja is faring against major trading currencies on the foreign exchange market. A recent report by the Center for Social Concern has indicated that debt contraction processes in Malawi are very elaborate but are not followed, which has led to Malawi's public debt reverting to unsustainable levels. From Lilongwe, Chimu Mangazi with the details. The report, which analyzes trends during the period since 2006, found out that debt went up significantly to 2.9 trillion kwacha in June 2018 from 426 billion kwacha in 2005. 
The report further recommends that authorities need to do careful scrutiny of loans to ensure that any new borrowing should be directed with highest priority to the productive sector of the economy such as agriculture, energy and transport sectors. Leslie Kandawire is an independent consultant who compiled the report. What we have seen is that the domestic debt has been increasing in terms of proportion to the total debt. So what we did before we started, I mentioned to the center to say, why don't we also lean on the domestic debt side? Because that gives a lot of pressure on the budget. So this will have a key uh, 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 impact on, on, the, on the study. And the other thing is that uh, on the external debt, uh, one of the significant things that we, we see is that the, although we're not borrowing that much, but there is incoming of the bilateral creditors. I mentioned China and India. They, 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 they're coming in quite strongly in terms of the amounts of money that are, they're, they're, they're lending to, uh, to the government. But, and, but most of those uh, bilaterals, they, their debts are not as concessional as the multilateral debt. So those are the key uh, highlights in this study. Looking at the period 2006 and now, the trend has been an upward one, and uh, mostly um, uh, after 2011, that's when we are seeing a real big jump uh, of both domestic and, and external debt. So the trend has been an upward one, and the trajectory looks like it's going on. Although this year, 2018, uh, there is a little bit of some stabilization. Uh, we haven't established the reason for that. But uh, the trend is an upward trajectory, and uh, uh, that is what should bring a concern uh, to both uh, everyone that is looking at debt or everyone who is concerned with debt. That's, that's, the, uh, that's the area that one should look at. What we have seen is a number of projects that have been, have been signed. If you look at the, the loans, 82 loans within this period of time, it's quite, quite heavy and some of them are not small loans. The only thing is that these loans have been signed, they've become part of debt, but you'd find that the implementation of those loans is what is not. I think that's, that's the key thing that we are finding out, that implementation of those loans is not as expected. You find a loan was signed in 2010, 2011, they're still disbursing after so many years. A loan is given a time when you disburse, and then you start getting benefits from the project. But the projects are still ongoing and forever ongoing. Minister of Finance, Economic Planning and Development, Guru Gondwe, laughed off the findings of the report, stressing that technocrats in the ministry are the ones that work on the budget and the loans that Malawi signs. Technical people are all working on the budget. They have got a budget department. We have a director of the budget. We have the secretary to the treasury. Uh, and myself, all these people are technical people and they're working on the budget. The president has nothing to do with it. Uh, he gives us the green light of what he wants done and we budget it. The reason why the uh, debt has gone up, it's domestic debt that has gone up. The reason is that uh, we didn't have the budget support, as you know. We did not have the... Uh, did not have, uh, uh, and we had a lot, a lot of losses of body through casket, and for us to uh, to uh, to continue with the same services of government, paying salaries and everything else, uh, and going in with the, the, the development budget also, the IMF advised us that uh, we should start with uh, a high borrowing rate. And, and they temper it later when we are uh, sure of our resources. And as you know, we've never been uh, sure of our resources because uh, we've had a very bad uh, in between, uh, and which meant that uh, we could not produce as much as, uh, the column was not producing as much as we expected, and therefore the MRA could not collect enough mm -hmm. as we expected. And those are the reasons why we have uh, uh, we have uh, uh, a higher debt, uh, debt than we have expected. That's domestic debt. From Lirongwe, I am Jimomo Mangazim.
Until next week, I'm Eric Nsigidi, but always remember, if it didn't make money in 2018, it would definitely not make sense in 2019. Now you can access the Daily Times, Malawi News, and the Sunday Times newspapers anytime, anywhere, by the click of a mouse or a swipe on your smartphone. With E-Times, right on your mobile gadget, flip through the pages with a swipe or a click. Navigate through all pages and see clear pictures and designs. Access a database of previous papers of the Daily Times, Malawi News, and the Sunday Times. Easy. Subscribe now to E-Times. Go to www.times.mw forward slash e-edition. Sign up and log in. Enter your password and enjoy the newspaper. It's about